What's up, live? Check in, check in. Uh, we're doing this video immediately after the laundromat video. There's no telling when you guys will see it. Um, but for the benefit of those people that decide to tune in, hopefully YouTube sends out my post notifications. I know lots of times if I do videos back to back, it may not send all my notifications out, but we're going to see, right? So if you saw part one of the video, it's when I actually went and checked it out uh, with my cousin who uh, has family members and friends that live in that area. And you guys saw what it looked like. You guys heard my opinion on it. But that video ended. I told you guys I'm going to have uh, the appliance expert, Mr. Mike Sneed of Appliance Bootcamp, check it out. So we have uh, the listing on the screen because uh, it was actually on Craigslist of all places and uh, for $12,000. And I'm going to just have uh, Sneed go through it, uh, just pretty much tell us his logic so uh, the value in this, hopefully, is if you're somebody that's interested in one day investing in a laundromat with some other people or buying your own laundromat, you can kind of know uh, from the perspective of somebody that really knows appliances, what questions to ask, what to look for, so that you can make the best decision possible, right? So um, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. And uh, I just want to hear, you know, if you could just think out loud for us and for the benefit of them. What do you think about this listing, just going through it, and what questions should we ask? Uh, hit that like button. Comment where you're watching this from. If you guys got any unanswered questions, uh, put it in the live chat, and uh, we'll get you an answer while you're here. Okay. Uh, the 12000 that that really catches my eye uh, for the laundromat because uh, look, just looking and looking for looking at what you had listed, I'm just going to move to a couple of the, a couple of the pictures. Right. And the median household income in this area, I did look it up, is like 47000 So an uh, average person that lives where this laundromat, the city rather, that lives in the city where this laundromat is located makes around 47000 Of course, when they say medium household average, there's some people that make way less, some people that make way more. But uh, So the average person in this city makes around $47,000 a year. Uh, but this is in the hood. When I say the hood... I mean, it's projects on either side of it, right? Yeah, I'm looking through. He, uh, you, you got twelve thousand. Uh, you got twelve thousand, and and equipment in there. Just as is, even as the, is. a yeah. lot of them are broken. If not all, yeah, of them. I, I don't care about them being broken. Uh, uh, I, I, I can fix them, and uh, a lot of people who who, who got laundry mats and stuff like that, they fix them. So uh, you got twelve thousand just in equipment there. And the other thing I look at there, I was looking, I look and see how much more value add I could put there. Um, I'm looking through. He don't have any vending, so he don't have any soda machines, any snack machines. And what happened with that? You can make that almost into like a little a little store because uh, a laundromat you can leave it open 24 hours a day. You don't need nobody there watching it. But you got that'd be like a, almost like a convenience store you could have there because the people in, in there actually uh, washing their clothes. Uh, they're going to want candy. They're going to want uh, sodas. They're going to want potato chips. I'm also looking. I don't see anything where he's actually selling any, any like, laundry detergent or anything. It's, it's one in the little corner. Like, if you go uh -huh. through the pictures again, uh -huh. it, it look raggedy, though. Yeah. I'll tell you when to stop when you uh, okay. when, I, when I see it on the screen. Uh, stop right okay. there. Okay. 75 cent laundry bar. But, yeah, but that, I don't know if that works or not. Yeah, yeah, and plus the prices are up now. So you, you can actually update that and actually start uh, selling more, uh, selling selling more of that. And now, now today too, I see a lot of people put like these what they call those corn pushers. Like they they're getting quarters anyway in a laundromat, um, and they'll put like what they call corn pushers, almost like gambling, where you drop a quarter down, this bar is moving back and forth, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it try to push quarters down. So you can get them in there to actually. Uh, uh, it's the hood now. Yeah, it's the hood. That's what you want. Oh, <laughs> that's, 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 like, they might you bust your machine, machine and take nah, all your nah, quarters. They're not, they're not, they're, uh, not, they're not gonna go in the machine because uh, actually that's what the laundromat is for. It's for it's gonna be for the hood. Uh, if you're not doing wash and fold, it's not gonna be nothing you're gonna be able to do in the upper class. Mm -hmm. um, when you have them self washing the clothes and stuff, it's gonna be in the hood, and that's where you wanted it. And uh, unfortunately, the mindset of trying to throw quarters in there. To get some type, get two. You no, know, you spend twelve quarters trying to get two quarters. You want somebody <laughs> actually out there doing that? Yeah. So uh, 
Would you update any of these appliances or would you just fix what you already have? I'll just have? fix what I have. We got to fly in here. We got to yeah. fly in here yeah. too. So if you see us swatting like we're crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. Nah, I, I would just I would just keep what, the, what you have there and just fix it. Would you repaint them? Like you see how some of them are like, I guess they just yeah, old. Yeah, uh, to repaint them, they ain't gonna, that's a simple to do. Very simple. That's not going to be much money uh, to fix them. And a lot of it is just uh, it's just neglect of him not doing his regular maintenance from what I've seen in the pictures. Yeah, because it's kind of like dirty yeah, it's all just, the way it's around. Just, it's just regular maintenance needs to be done. And the reason why you're not seeing people coming in there is because they don't have no trust in the machines. They don't trust mm -hmm. that they put their quarter in if it's going to work. Yep. If you came there and you actually they saw you update the machines, go there, clean the place up, and, um, and actually just put some sign up under new management or whatever, and maybe even have uh, have one free wash day where they just come in and you give them no. You give them the whole day, or you give them a block of time. Give them a block of time. Just give okay. them a block of time where they say, "Okay, come here. Well, everything's working now. Let them see that you no, know, everything's been been uh, uh, revamped. You know, you 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 could easily make some money out of that place. Do you think you need to hire an attendant? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Not not in the laundry mat. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. I I wouldn't do it. If you uh, and it might be hard to do uh, from the pictures, but if you had to give a ballpark, honestly, from being there, I'll say at least 80 percent of the washing machines and dryers are either they don't work at all or they it, you got to put more money in it than mm -hmm. advertised in order to get them started. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that you can like estimate twelve thousand for it? How much you think it'll cost to get it looking good, everything working right? Is um, that any way to say it? If he's asking, if he got twelve thousand there, uh, that's not what he, uh, that that's what he wants to get, but he knows he's not gonna get twelve thousand. Mm -hmm. um, what would you offer him then? I guess that's I'll, the first I'll, I'll, I'll offer him half. I offer him, especially if I look and see how long it's been there thirty days. Yep. If he if he ain't got no hit in thirty days, I'll go to offer him five or six thousand cash. Because uh, what happened? With no books, because that's another good point I want to make too. Appreciate all forty one people that's watching. Hit that thumbs up button. Not to cut you off, no man. problem. But uh. If this is the part two of the video you guys more than likely just seen. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, we'll link it down below in both videos. But like I said at the end of that video, I was going to bring it in front of Mike. This is actually the listing uh, of where I physically was. If you have any questions about a laundromat business, put it in the live chat and we'll address it after we go through the spiel. But not to cut you off. No uh, yeah, I'll probably offer them five or six thousand because if he has it, uh, right now, he, he he's barely breaking even and reading his post. He's about an hour away, and mm -hmm. he, he's tired of driving back down there, keeping an eye on the laundromat. You got babysitting because uh, uh, if you leave your quarters in there, yes, yeah, somebody gonna come get them. So you gotta be there getting your quarters out. You gotta get there making sure that they have enough change because that's another thing. If they don't have enough change and they can't get any change to wash their clothes, then they're not gonna be there. So you gotta be there making sure that the corn ho uh, hopper is sealed. Um, so he, he's just tired of it. So I don't actually think he owns it. Uh, be honestly, I don't think he owns it. I think somebody else owned it and they just wanted to get out there. They just wanted to get from up under the rent. He took it over and he's selling it, trying to make him a couple of thousand dollars because he know what he got in his hand. So mm -hmm. I think maybe five or six thousand, he'll let it go. And you take over the lease and he ain't got to worry about that. He put a couple of thousand in his pocket. Uh, it'll take you another three or four thousand. That's uh, it. I'm thinking three or four thousand. If you're gonna do the work yourself, if you know how to mm -hmm. fix the machines yourself, I'll put in another three to four thousand um, dollars fixing the machines up, getting enough of the machines up and running where you can start making your money. And then, if anything more going on than that, I would just actually let the laundromat start to pay for it. But I invest another three to four thousand getting the machines up. Um, okay, so if they take six, you put another four in. You think ten thousand dollars all in, you could have this uh, making money. Uh, couple yeah, of yeah, I, 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 I would have it making money. Um, and have it then start to pay for itself. Once it, uh, once it, uh, get it up and running, I just use the, um, the money that the wash machine generate, uh, to pay for the rest of it. And like I say, to get the, uh, to get the, to get the money, laundry mats was, uh, reason laundry mats are always been notorious for, uh, for, uh, not keeping books and stuff. And that's, that's that was gonna be my next question too, because I know a lot of you guys seen. I posted this on Instagram when I was there. Appreciate all fifty six people hit that thumbs up button. If you have questions about owning a laundromat, you're gonna get an answer from the appliance expert. We're just breaking down the listing of if you just saw the last video. This is where I physically was, but now 
Mike is helping me go through it. But you were saying laundry mats was yeah. first for not having books. Yeah. And, and my question that I wanted to ask before you get go into ahead. it is that um, why is that not a deal breaker? Because I know for me, it kind of scared me away because uh -huh. how are you saying give you twelve thousand dollars? And I don't know if you're making any money. And every time I've been in there. Yeah, I ain't see nobody. Ain't yeah, you're no not gonna see nobody because nobody have any trust in the machine. Mm -hmm. uh, I know in the laundromats, when you got a, a, a staple of people in the projects, a lot of times in the projects, they're not gonna have washers and dryers. Mm -hmm. I know I got a staple of people coming there, I can get them in here to actually wash. Now, with the laundromats, like I said, laundromats have been notorious for people not keeping books and stuff because that's how the mob used to run their money. That's how the, the name laundry money came from. Oh. Because of laundromats. The okay. mobs used to build laundromats everywhere, and then they would tell the government that it was a cash business, and then they would, uh, all of a sudden, they make deposits of uh, $50,000, $70,000 a, uh, a week, and they oh, say, where did it come from? came from the laundromat. Oh, so they, that's how they learn laundry. something new every yeah, day. That's how they're laundering yeah. money. So uh, the way you can tell how much a laundromat is making, the same way the FBI and the government had to go get the mob, you can actually, uh, you know how many, you know how many gallons it takes to make a wash, and you know how many, uh, uh, and you can actually go get the actual water bill from the actual city or whoever his water bill is, and see how many gallons of water he's used in the last couple of months, and then you can uh, divide that by how many gallons it takes to do one wash. And, and that will be by looking up the model and serial number yeah, of the yeah, washing machine? Yeah, yeah the model um, the wash machine will tell you how many gallons they use per wash. Okay. And then you uh, you can uh, divide how many gallons they use for that month by how long how many, how many gallons it take for a wash. And then you can see how many washes was done. And then if he's charging $2, you, charge, you multiply that by two. Okay. And then you can know how much money he makes. So you wouldn't worry about the dryers? No, nah, most of the time in the dryers, a lot of times, in a lot of places, they let you wash for free, and you uh, and you can uh, dry. You can wash, but then you have to dry for. You can dry for free. You're not okay. gonna make much money off the dryers. The dryers are good, but you're not gonna make money off. Make money. Off. The dryers are money, mainly convenience, but the money is in the wash. Is that something that you think will help this location? If if you invest in it, fix all the washers and make all the dryers free, or um, I don't know here if that'll go too well because you're not gonna. You don't really have to do that. From what I you told me, it's not much yeah. competition. Yes, but up, but up north, you got laundry mats everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have to have some competition where uh, you have to compete, and you actually do that. So okay, you can uh, you can wash for, uh, you you pay for the wash, but you can dry your clothes for free. Okay, all right. So uh, what about uh, allegedly? Because again, they don't have any books. It takes thirteen hundred dollars a month to run this. Do you think that uh, that and that's, that's that, uh, uh, you know the rent? And you just, mm -hmm. you just get electric bills. That's all you, you get it. Uh, utilities, and you you know how much it costs to run. Mm -hmm. And if he if 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 he haven't done the basic maintenance on his machines and stuff, um, it could be that uh, if he you done maintenance, the utilities might come down. Okay. All right. And one thing he put in his listing too. So we're gonna ask for the benefit of all seventy five people that's watching now. He said that if you want the uh, if you want to, he doesn't own the building. So he suggested that you can go in. Fix them up and run this laundry mat. Pay your thirteen hundred a month, or you can just repair them and flip them. So, what do you think is a better investment for somebody? Uh, just leave them, leave them where they at. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because if you, uh, if you, that's what he's doing. Uh, he ain't repairing them, but he's flipping them. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think for one minute that he owns his laundry mat. I don't think for one minute he owns it. I think he's just flipping. It. He, he just somebody couldn't pay the rent. He grabbed it and he's just making some money. Nah, I wouldn't be. In the business of trying to sell used uh, commercial laundry equipment, no flipping used commercial laundry equipment. Okay. You know, if it, if it, if if it was if it was residential equipment, yeah, I I I would say you know if, depending on the price, I would go in and actually buy uh, used residential washers. But you got bigger, you got bigger, you got much bigger clientele you can sell for. Okay. But for commercial appliances, you only got a small niche that you can sell to. And uh, everybody, uh, just like if you bought like a, if you bought like a duplex or something that you know is going to be rented out to commercial mm -hmm. to an investor, you're going to be selling to an investor. An investor going to beat you in the head and take all the money out of it. He going to take all the money out of the deal. He's not like the, uh, going to direct customers. You're going to an investor. He's looking for a deal. OK. Last question that I have is uh, in your experience. Right. Uh, these appliances aren't going to get used the same way. Appliances get used in a house mm -hmm. where uh, if somebody lives in a the house, they might do laundry every few days or once mm -hmm. a week or however, depending on the size of their family. These are going to be used multiple times every single day. So that being said, um, 
what kind of savings buffer would you recommend, if any, basically to say, I know these are going to get used more than the average washing machine and they're going to need repairs. Do you yeah. recommend that I have a savings buffer or whoever invests in it have a um, saving buffer? I'm, I'm looking at the machines they have. I'm saying Speed Queens. I'm saying the, uh, some of the older direct drives and all that stuff. Those right there, they you know, those washers, they last 25, 30 years. You fix them. They last 24. They ain't like the ones you got in your house. Mm -hmm. These are the ones that were built to last, and Speed Queen still make their stuff to last 25, 30 years. So if you go ahead and you uh, refurbish them and put them, you get them working, um, uh, you're going to have little to no problem with them. Oh, uh, the biggest problem, like I say, you have is people trying to go in and get the quarters. If you're there going to get your quarters and you're getting them out in a timely manner and they see you coming through there, they know you got security cameras and stuff up, mm -hmm. I think you'd be safe. And how often would you... Uh would you recommend somebody to go in there every day, every week? Uh, it depends uh, on how, how, many, how much quarters you got turning through there. Um, if, uh, you definitely got to go there uh, uh, right after the weekend because you know it's filled up on Sunday and whatnot. Yeah, the weekend. The weekend. Yeah. So you got to go there right after right the weekend and pool. And it depends. Maybe a couple of times, maybe once or twice during the week and pool because you don't want to leave no quarters in there. You leave them in there, somebody will be there to get them. Mm -hmm. How long do you think? And we're gonna get to you guys' questions right now. Uh, because I keep saying last question, but uh, last thing, Mike, because I'm trying to think of what all the basics would be. How long do you think it will take to get these up and running for somebody that does it themselves, or if you hire a technician? Because I know we got some people from appliance boot camp that's not too far from that area. Uh, some uh, to get the appliances up and running, yeah. You think somebody could do that in a week? Have oh, it? good lord. Uh, uh, it's a lot of appliances. Yeah, right? those oh. appliances they don't, they don't take long to fix. If uh, if if a, a spirits technician like myself went in there, mm -hmm. um, a couple of days I can fix. I can fix you can fix everything. I can probably fix. One it. of them don't even have a door. You can't see it. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah. I I can I can fix just about everything in a couple of days. All right, so there you have it. Now it's you guys' turn. Uh, we just went through that listing, and uh, one of if you've seen the first video, it'll make more sense. But even not. Uh, you can get the understanding. We're just basically going over some things that you might want to look into if you ever want to get a laundromat. And this is literally the exact same laundromat I was just in. And you guys might heard my feedback on it. Now you heard from the expert. Now, uh, afternoon, gentlemen. What's up, Blissful Savings? Peace, JT. Baton Rouge checking in. Uh, I've been waiting to get a laundromat. Mm -hmm. Cool. Watching from the UK. Shout out to all my international viewers. Shout out to Raleigh checking mm -hmm. back in. Uh, you'll be running appliance repair, JT. Uh, no worries for you. That's a good investment. <laughs> All right. I signed up to the online course. I'm extra lit. All right. Cool. Who cool. appreciate that? Um, is it possible to use use laundry and update them with the coin machines? Uh, I, I guess they basically saying just, I guess, just keep them. You yeah. Use, I, I, use I, I was, I was, or are you talking about use? Uh, Residential washing machines? No, you can't do that. You gotta have commercial machines. They uh they're set up totally different. You, you know? might give them a little bit, of, not yeah, too in depth. If you want what's the to difference work. between a residential and a commercial? Yeah, because I guess looking at it, it might seem yeah. From, from one uh the actual timers and the controls are right here. That like when you push the button to start on your house, they're gonna have a a, a slide here that actually hits the start and timer button there. So it, it uh it, the actual workings in here, the mechanical workings are gonna be the same. It's going to be up here at the top at the actual uh, user interface and the timers and the control boards. Those are going to be different than where you have at your actual residential uh, house. And um, so that, and the wiring is going to be different. But the actual mechanical, once you get here, all that stuff is going to be the same. Cool. Um, I am. Uh, let's go. I got 3,000 and we could be partners. Nicholas Gomez, right? Yeah. And I, I could drop the link. Um, do I already have it up? Give me one second. We'll drop the link to it. Everybody can eat. Welcome to the JT Hustles channel where everybody eats. So I'm gonna put in. The, I'm gonna put the link to this in the live chat. If you're watching this after the fact and can't see the live chat for whatever reason, we'll put it in the description too. So that's the exact link of of what's up on the board. If you want to go check it out after this, um, I do recommend don't leave now. Ask, ask all your questions now and then go check it out and uh, make the decision for yourself. Um, maybe go the cashless route. Um, how you feel about? Yeah, you can you can do that too. You where think it's it, worth the investment though, yeah. instead of just fixing what you got? No, nah, he's talking about the cashless route. He's he's saying, um, you know, because a lot of those coin changers are actually uh, 
They're actually uh, they're actually bad. So you have to replace the uh, slides anyway. Mm -hmm. He's talking about going to where you actually uh, give them a card where they come there and they buy a card and they can reload it and then they take the card into the actual electronic slide to actually start the machine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though you think it's worth the investment? Uh, I. Nah, I'll probably just keep it in the corn slot. If you got people going into the store next door and buying a cup of ice, uh, they want, they, they're want they going to come there and put the corns in. I'll just keep it that way. Okay, cool, cool. Yep, see somebody else talking about the cornless side. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a chance you take with any business. Um, you may need to just update the machines, right? Yeah, and like I say, you can start to do that. I wouldn't do it all at once. Just uh, get it up and running, and then um, and then you can actually uh, do like a, a plan to get them updated. You know, once every two or three months, you replace the machine. Are you familiar with the prices at all? Because I'm assuming it's different to get a commercial washer and dryer than a regular one. How much you think yeah. one of those washing machines will cost, uh, or one of those dryers? It costs you about twelve, fifteen hundred dollars for one, brand new, uh, for the top load. Now, if you go on to those front loaders, you're going to go a couple of thousand. It'll be several thousand for a uh, for actual front load. But is it worth it? You think this top load is well, the best you, for uh, Since it is in the in Well, the hood. what's it called? Uh, I look at uh, a couple of people who do laundromats, uh, do a lot of laundromat uh, investment. And what happened, even though you have, you, most of your money is made in the top loads. Okay. Because what's it called? The top loads, they can only do, a, uh, they do smaller loads and you charge just a little bit less money than the, uh, than the front, front load. load. But uh, what happens, uh, you can tell People, you can put three loads in the front load, uh, and it's cheaper. But because you, uh, if that top load was a dollar twenty-five and the front load was two dollars, and their mindset is it's cheaper to do it in here, mm -hmm. so they uh, they're gonna go to the top load. So uh, a lot of people have uh, front loads just mainly for uh, large blankets and stuff like that. But all the money is gonna be made in the top load. The front load, uh, for some reason, people don't think that it's worth the money. They want to they want to do the small. Ones. Okay. All right. Oh, one, one more thing I want to touch on too. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Carolinas at all, and you think that I'm exaggerating when I say the hood, the link is in the live chat. The link is also uh, going to be in the description after the fact. If you are going to go check it out, go check it out in the daytime hours. You, you might be fine either way, but I want you to see what it really looks like in the daytime hours. So you know where it is. Right. Uh, and we'll just leave it at that. So yeah. Um, where do we leave off at? Um, okay, see some other people saying updated. What about the foot traffic for the location? Do you see enough people coming through? Uh, if the area isn't safe, not many people want to come through. It really depends on the location. So, um, like, I've been out there, I think, like, four or five times, and it's a lot of people walking by, but it's not a lot of people just standing around hanging out. Um, like, like my cousin said, there's a hood store right there and, uh, everybody in the projects, they, they just walk over there. Even the people with a car is literally right across the street. So instead of burning gas, they just walk across the street or down the street. Cause it's, it's a really big, uh, community back there. So it is a lot of foot traffic, but nobody goes in there, um, at all. And I think it is because what Mike said, there is no trust with, uh, the laundromat, the washers and dryers actually working. How they should be, but there's plenty of people walking past there. There's a seafood restaurant that's pretty popular that's in that shopping center, and there's that uh, that convenience store that has everything from snacks to stockings, t-shirts, cups, of ice, whatever you need. It's like your one-stop shop uh, for that area. Let me see. Uh, in the laundromat near me, you pay to wash and you pay to dry. Cool. Uh, if you're going to have a free wash. You have to up the price on the wash. Yeah, you would. You go. Up the, you 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 won't be free, but you you get a perception that it's free. You uh, up the price on the wash to cover the dry, but uh, you get a perception that it's free. All right, where do it jumped up on us, you guys? Bear with me one second. Um, where do we leave off? Um, okay, no five. No financial statements to know its value. Uh, do you mind for the benefit of now we got 81 people watching just real quickly saying why uh, that's not a deal breaker for you if they don't have any uh, um, finan financial statements? Uh, like Because the laundry, because laundry mats are notorious for not having uh, uh, financial statements and the government has came in and figured out a way to actually tell how much money actually coming through a laundromat. 
they will actually look and see how the, the water uses and from the water uses, they can tell how many washes were done done per month. And then you can tell how much um, money is coming through it. All right. Um, coffee machine, gumball machine, uh, Wi-Fi could draw folks in, right? Um, another question that I don't know if they asked yet, but uh, would you leave it 24-7 or would you give it hours? I'll leave it 24-7. I'll leave okay. it 24-7. All right. My concern is about his lease. Since he doesn't own the building, can the business be kicked out of the current location at some point? Um, I guess not if you go into a one year or whatever yeah. term lease and you pay your rent on time, right? Yeah, and for most businesses, it's not going to be uh, – if you're going into a business, you're going to get a long-term lease. You want to get somewhere like five or ten years to lock it in. Right. Uh, how is the plumbing, electricity, foundation, liens on property, any robberies, right? So he doesn't own the property. So if there is a lien against it, it it's not like his fault, yeah. really. But um, Mike, would you be concerned with the checking the plumbing, the electrical? Um, I guess the foundation will be go back yeah, to the I, owner. Never go back to the owner. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm not sure about robberies. They do have boat locks on the. I don't know what it's formally called, but where you stick your dollars in and get quarters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, far as the plumbing and electricity, you can have somebody come out and check. Uh, but if he got the laundry going in there and stuff, uh, and got laundry mat still going, I know the plumbing at least getting water to some of the machines. So I know the plumbing <laughs> there, and I know uh, the dryer in there too. Only thing I, my concern, uh, being out in the country, sometimes they have propane versus natural gas, and I see he got gas dryer. I would like to know if he got propane um, or natural gas. All right. You might explain it to them why it matters, propane um, or natural gas. Because propane, natural gas. yeah, natural gas is cheaper. Um, and it's just what you call they, uh, the city just, uh, or whoever just pipes it right in to you propane. Um, a lot of times it's more expensive the price changes too much for me. And, um, you have to have somebody bring it to you. And if you, uh, you got to compete with the farmers and everybody out there for pro propane. And, uh, you, uh, if you run out of propane, you're done uh, until another truck come there and fill it up. And sometimes we had a point. Uh, when uh, it was a shortage on propane, so I, I would I, I wouldn't want propane. I wouldn't have natural gas coming in. Cool, those machines look very old. Yeah, they they got some age on them. But Mike said, you know, in his experience, yeah. those machines was built the the last a long yeah. time. Yeah, they're good. All right, so he not the owner, just trying to sell it for someone else to make money as a middleman. I'm I, not sure. Yeah, probably. I assume that, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'm I'm just assuming that. Right. How about a partner laundry building? Right. I don't really understand it. Uh, I think he want to partner with you uh, uh, <laughs> going in. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, like I'm still not, I'm still not a hundred percent sure about it yet. Now Mike has gave me some newfound insight in it. Um, yeah, but like I'm still, you know what I mean, still thinking about it at this point in time. Uh, those look like antiques. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. No arcade. No sinks. Mm -hmm. Right. All um, that stuff easy. You can easily put that in. Right. Do you think it needs sinks in there? Uh, I don't know. I, what people doing in the sink? They washing the. I want them washing the machine. I don't want them washing in the sink. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they be doing in the sink. All right. Oh, another thing too that um I don't think they can sell in the pictures, but um there's no restroom. There is a door in there, but that's the room that has the security cameras in it. Do you think that that impacts it at all? Because I know the since I don't have a laundry room no more because of the fish. The, the laundry mat that I use, it has a restroom, or you think it's not that big of a deal? Uh, I don't know. You're gonna probably gonna have to talk to uh, talk to the uh, what's call talk to the city about the code. Uh, okay. You might have to you might have to have a bathroom in there. I okay. don't know. They might have one, but it's, I know just those the doors that's in there are locked, yeah. so it might just be as easy as yeah, you unlocking the see, door. See what the city says. All right. Um, he gonna have to make it look new by repainting it and renaming it. Uh I, 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 I think we what we call we we're, we're over uh we're, we're thinking that we're going after high end customers. Unfortunately, uh, we're going after uh, a lower income people. When I say the hood, I'm talking about the project. Yeah, yeah. So it's not going to be. Uh, we, we'll give them something nice, but we're not going to give them the Taj Mahal. Um, <laughs> they you have to look at what their touch points are. Their touch. You no, know, if you're going to upper and middle class, yeah, they want the they. You got to then give them the actual presentation. For them to come, uh, what they're actually looking at, they're looking at the functionality and the price. If it's cheap and it's working, they happy. They don't care what it looks like or anything. They want to just get the get their clothes clean. All right. Is there any other laundromats in the area that's competition? Right. There are laundromats in the city. However, 
they're like the city is, is, is pretty big. Mm -hmm. So there is no other laundromats in this area. And there are a lot of people on that side of town in that area. Mm -hmm. So uh, like how I mentioned in the other video, I said that if you were trying to target uh, high end customers, then that would be an uphill battle. But see, uh, but Mike pointed out that you wouldn't even target them. Yeah, they're not um, gonna come there. <laughs> okay, if you if you if you if you could tell them they can come wash for free. They're not coming there to the hood to wash. Okay. Um, um, most of the time, the high end what they want to do, um, like we have some high end washing machines now. They're actually situated near apartments where the rent is like two thousand dollars a month, and they're not sitting in there all day Saturday to wash no clothes. They want to pull up to the front door, drop their clothes off, then they come back and pick them up, and they already washed and fold. So you're gonna be doing more of a wash and fold service more so than somebody coming there sitting all day washing. They uh they got the money to pay for somebody else to wash them. Um, it's just convenient for them to wash and fold, and then they do stuff like with the um they do stuff like with the uh with rest homes and um uh, and and places like that. Hotels bring this sometimes might bring their stuff to get wash and fold. Um, group homes and stuff like that. Uh, so it's more of a business than it is of a, a laundromat here. You just provide some place for people to come wash their clothes. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't have transportation. So you got you got two or three kids, and and you, you know save the clothes for a week or two, or maybe three weeks. You it's hard to get in the Uber with uh, with all those clothes <laughs> and think you're gonna go to the laundromat and sit all day. Mm -hmm. You want somewhere convenient where you can just walk there and, and uh, wash your clothes and, and, and whatnot. All right, and this is a teachable moment for me. So uh, and we'll just do it live. So me uh, being there. Uh, several times and looking at it and it smells like dirty clothes, even though there is no clothes in there. I kind of thought that um, the business failed because of the clientele, which is why I was thinking you need to target a different clientele, because my logic behind that was if the local people supported it and didn't keep tearing up machines, then the owner would continually invest and it wouldn't have the problems that it have now where 80, 90 percent of them are broken. But it seems like if you had to speculate why this failed, you don't think it was the clientele. Do I think it was? Yeah, because uh, that's it's, why it's, I was kind of skittish. Uh, it's, it's, a little, it's both. The, you know what the client the clientele is going to do what the clientele do because it's the mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know they're going to do that. And when you go into business, you have to uh, automatically know that, that the, mind, the people that you're actually going after, the mindset that they have is going to cause them not to value uh, the services that you put in there. So when your job is to make sure you go get your quarters out. Your job is to make sure that uh, if somebody do put graffiti and stuff on the wall, that you paint right over top of it. Your job is uh, uh, if some, uh, making sure you got cameras, making sure you got locks on stuff where people can't break in because they're going to try. It's just it's just the nature of where you at. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have you have to uh, you have to govern yourself accordingly. Now, if you want people to come there and, and look nice about it. Uh, unfortunately, you have to you have to move you have to move people in with the same mindset that you want you <laughs> want to go there. But the people mindset that's there, uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it, it's not it's not it's not to put them down. But if you if you live in in a, in an environment where it's a struggle from day to day to day, um, right now all you caring about is survival. You don't you don't you can't think two days and three days out. You think a lot of those people living by the hour. So if they hungry and they think quarters inside that machine. You know, uh, they they trying to get some quarters out the machine because they trying to they trying to live by the hour. They need something to eat right now. So, mm -hmm. so. cool. How is the lighting during the night? Uh, you do want to make sure your spot is well lit at night. Inside, they keep all the lights on, so uh, this video might not be the the greatest indication yeah. of it. But um, like how you guys seen, but outside there's like really not that many lights. Uh, for the sake of illustration, I'm gonna just turn it. Like, and you guys can tell it's dark outside. It's literally the same setup at that laundromat. So they keep all the lights on uh, at night, but the only light you'll see outside is pretty much, of course, people's lights since it is a community there. And down the block is the, the hood store and headlights. So it's not like, it's not like Walmart, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's not like well-lit parking lot like Walmart. Yeah. And, uh, if you want to put a light out, you can. It don't, don't cost you no money for an electrician to come put your light out. But just know if you put a light out, you're going to probably have more people hanging out in front of the place <laughs> because it's light now. So you're going, to have, you're going to have that where people hanging out in front of your door harassing people as they go in. You don't want that keeping people out the, uh, the place. But a lot of times, um, places like that, you're a business owner. 
You can go down to the sheriff or the police department and ask for daily, uh, ask for nightly runs where the police will actually make his run through there and check everything uh, once an hour or so. You know? And let the people know how much that costs, Mike. Oh, it's free. It's free. It's free. You're a business owner. You go down there and you say, hey, um, I'd like to have you come through here and uh, just make a run. And uh, they'll come through and make a run. All right. How much is the rent on that building? Uh, they're listing it as it's thirteen hundred a month operating expenses. Uh, I'm not sure how much of that is in the rent, but they're just saying for your lights, your water, and your rent. Um, currently, is thirteen hundred dollars. But um, and, and like Mike said, now we have a way to verify how much is making by having that individual go get the water bill and show it to us. And of course, if you take it over. The landlord is going to want you to sign that lease and, and they're not going to keep it a secret how much your rent is because they want to get paid. So um, but they're advertising currently thirteen hundred dollars a month is what it's going to cost to maintain this place. So um, and that's another thing, too, that if, if they're trying to sell it for 12 grand and every month that goes by, it's at 27 days now. Um, every month that goes by, if it's costing them thirteen hundred dollars. Right. Uh, which to me sounds like a lot because ain't nobody in there. So I don't know how, uh, unless the rent is the majority of that, um, how that's, how that's going. So they might do have quite a bit of wiggle room, um, on that price. Like Mike mentioned earlier, um, where's the bless, where's the best place to find laundry mats to buy? Um, I don't know. Somebody sent me this one. Uh, well, they were telling me about it. I checked it out, but it, it's on Craigslist. Now I don't know if that's where all the laundry mats are, but this one in particular, is on Craigslist, uh, and the link to it is in the live chat, and in, it's going to be down in the description below. Um, update your machines for cars. We talked about that. I would validate which machines actually are repairable, then do evaluation on that, then replace the machines necessary, right? Jumping around, those things are heavy. Uh, don't forget to like and share. So definitely do that. Appreciate all 97 people that's watching. If you're just now checking in, we're talking about what well, we already did. The, the mic starts on that laundry mat that I went to uh, yesterday and looked at and it's for sale for 12 grand. Heard his thoughts on it. Now we're just going through any unanswered questions you guys might have about uh, what questions you, you have about that particular laundry mat or about any laundry mat at all. Um, let me see. How much the laundry mat going to bring you if you don't have any P&L sheets? Um, we already talked about that yeah, we with the uh, water bill. You look at the water bill. Yeah. Uh, what would the water and electric bill be? Again, the, the listing he just, uh, or I don't know if it's a he, the owner uh, says $1,300 a month, right? Um, with the machine running constantly, is the electricity high? Right? Uh, no, they drown with gas. So it's not going to be as much electricity. They're using gas. All right. Uh Vending machines be okay. Yep, we talked about that. Security system have to be linked to my phone if no attendant works in 24-7. Cool. That's definitely possible. Uh, I think the area may be safer than what we think. If you didn't see any uh, stripped down machines for parts and metal, then it's probably not that bad. Now, I just seen one machine uh, that was missing a door. A couple of machines was missing like the lock area where how you unlock it to get your quarters out uh, and stuff like that. There's a lot of them that aren't working. But as far as strip, there's none that's completely strip. Um, and, and, you know, with the technology we have today, like with Ring and all that, you see stuff real time and you can talk to the person. You know? <laughs> and somebody that's doing something, you, you can talk right to them through Ring and all that. Just run them out. And that's what a lot of people do. They just use the technology there. It's, um, they, got the they got the technology now if, uh, with vending machines and stuff like that. If somebody's bumping up against it and stuff, it, it'll let you know somebody's trying to like, knock something out. So uh, it is uh, technology now. You can see you can talk to them real time. All right. Would you get a coin machine to keep things moving on site? They did have one that was kind of placed on the on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And even with the coin machines, um, you watch my call. You uh, uh, when you got to you got to keep going there, filling up the Harper. Because what happened? They're putting dollar bills in. Then they're taking the quarters out, putting in the machine. And eventually what's going to happen, you're going to have dollar bills and filled up in your coin machine, the coin machine, you're not going to have any quarters. And if you ain't got any quarters, they can't wash, they're going to leave. So you got to constantly be coming back, taking the quarters out the machines, uh, putting them back into the corn hopper, taking the dollar bills out, taking those to the uh, bank. Cool. Uh, the property would be a good commercial spot for some type of business, even if you didn't want to use it as a laundromat. Well, what's the $12,000 for would be my question then. Like, would you spend $12,000 
just to try to flip it to get your money back just to have an empty building mm -hmm. for something else like me personally i wouldn't do that because i don't uh while i do have uh multiple businesses in mind that i want to uh get up and running uh in the coming year or so none of them really make sense to be um theirs right um no bathroom no problem most laundry mats i remember from the carolinas didn't have public bathrooms. Yeah, you um, might do that. A lot of a lot of uh, gas stations now won't let you use the bathroom. So I don't know. I I, I would check with the uh, check with the town, make sure that's okay. Cool. What's up, fellas? Good content as always. Thanks, Mike, for the history lesson on Launder Man. Right? <laughs> yeah. In the hood, they just worried about the machines work. Yeah. Um, true plus dry cleaning. This this sounded like an opportunity, especially since there aren't many laundromats in the area. Yeah, that's the only one in that in that area. Um, if you purchased it there, uh, should never be an out of order sign on any machine. <laughs> Lions boot camp to the rescue, All right? Um, let me see. But yeah, no, laundromats are notorious. They're gonna they're gonna break, yeah, but they simple fixes. Uh, people slam the lid down, break the lid switches, and stuff like that. People leave stuff in their pockets, clog drain pumps. All right. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Uh, what about hoods where the vast majority of people are washing clothes by hand and local electricity is turned off twice a month, right? In my area, I'm not really familiar with, with that. It's not that bad yeah. in the hood. When I say it's bad, it's like, you know, drugs and shootouts and, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Not, not for the laundromat before the, uh, <laughs> you got a washing machine and you, uh, you, what's it called? You got electricity there. Uh, I don't know uh, where it's so bad with people washing stuff by hand, beating stuff on rocks and stuff like back in the day. <laughs> Ooh, this is very informative. I was thinking about getting into the laundromat business. Just don't understand how dude didn't have any financial statements. Plus that lease might be a problem as well. Right? Uh, we talked about that. Because, because uh, you have to think, you're dealing with an all cash business. You're dealing with all, where you can state how much you have. Uh, a lot of people don't want uh, a lot of people don't want the government to know how much money they they make, and they want to be able to put it down and state it. You know, uh, he might uh, he might be making a lot of money. Don't want nobody to know, or he might be using it sometimes uh, as a front to, to to bring bring it through another business to to clean it up. You know, and sometimes people do illegal stuff, and they need a way to to wash money and clean it up. He can he can bring money in there and wash it up. Say hey, it's coming from his laundromat. So then he don't care if it works or not. He just uh, he just using it as a front. Okay. Um, what's the likely operation hours if you decide to go with this business twenty four seven? Um, I got a question for you, Mike. That that might be helpful. Um, let's say you do get the water bill and you know how much um each washing machine uses. Uh, so you factor out your numbers. I don't know if it's accurate or not. Well, I know most of them are inaccurate from mm -hmm. what the local said, uh -huh. but it's listed as like $2 a wash or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. How much would you need to see this business making for it be to be worth, even if it's not the twelve, the $10,000 investment we talk about? He takes six, you put four in it. How much money a week or a month would you say this makes sense for me to invest in? Well, look at that his right there. Um, I probably would even... I probably wouldn't even care much about his water bill because all his machines are broken. So I, I know I know that he's he's not he's not doing nothing towards the potential of what he could do. I would look at actual potential. I'll look at how many customers I got sending out back um at that uh in that projects and stuff. And that's what I'll be looking it's at. It's a few hundred. I don't know exactly, but it's like and then I'll look I'll, really I'll look at I'll look at the community of uh, uh, what what I what I could have there. And then I will I'll also uh um uh look look at people i could I, other people other things i could put in like i said they don't have no vending machine mm -hmm. i don't know if the stores are open 24 hours there so uh if you if, once the stores close late at night you know people want to get a coca-cola or a mountain dew or something or some chips you know you got uh you got now your now your convenience store is open i would look at all of those things look at the potential and the value add i could put into it versus uh versus the water bill because None of his stuff works, so I ain't gonna expect him to be bringing out any money in it yeah. because he might, like I said, he probably at the point where he don't even care about the money, he might be doing something else, uh, in front of it, all right? So, but but what number would you so you, you spend 10 grand is yours, mm -hmm. you spend 1300 a month as is, how much money would you have to make a week or a month for you to say this is worth my ten thousand dollars plus thirteen hundred dollars a month? If uh, if I was doing that, um. If I had spent out ten thousand dollars on that mm, up front in thirteen hundred a month, thirteen hundred a month, 
um, how close I am to it. Uh, me, I'm so far away, I wouldn't do it, but if it was somewhere, yeah. if it was somewhere close for mm -hmm. me to do it, um, where I know I'm going to be going out there several times a week, uh, I better be pulling somewhere uh, close to a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred dollars a week off of it. Okay, and um, and laundromat is uh, that's very doable to pull somewhere between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a week. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, because I think that that's valuable too. Because I see a lot of people in the chat and even on the Instagram when I first uh, uh, posted the pictures that everybody was just looking at the price and saying, "Oh, it's so cheap." So it's mm -hmm. good to have some insight from somebody that actually understands the appliance repair business and uh, definitely can give us insight. So for him, with twenty years of experience, and he probably will do all uh, of the work himself. He still uh, will want to see that it's bringing in a uh, thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a week, right? And uh, let me see where do we leave off? Um, as long as the washing machines, water get hot and the dryers get hot, people in the hood good, yeah. uh, right? This whole business discussion is gold, and I'm loving it. Cool. Um, let me see. All right. So yeah, Mike already touched on it. Like, uh, if you're in that local area, you think it's a good idea, right? Uh, yeah. If I uh, if it was somewhere close, I I would actually uh, <laughs> I would actually put a bid on it. If it was somewhere close, I would actually put a bid on. It. All right, cool. And uh, appreciate Rosalind Joseph said biz by sale has laundry mats on there. Shout out to Juan. Shout out to JT yeah. and Mike, and shout out to the ABC family. Appreciate yeah. you being here. Yeah. Uh, go use those. Yeah, I'll say. I, matter of fact, uh, the first laundry mat I went to that had all those broken machines. I was gonna actually um offer I, I was gonna offer to do something like that. Just say, hey, I bought uh I'll buy the laundromat uh from you and just pay you rent. Uh because he owned the building. I just pay him rent and fix all the machines. I um offer, I really was gonna offer to do something like that. All right, cool. I see some networking going on, asking about biz by sale, and then uh starting to like the idea now. Mm -hmm. Uh, since there isn't another laundromat nearby. All right. So um, I think we pretty much covered everything. So uh, we did the evaluation. You guys have the link that's in the live chat. You that's watching this after the fact, the link will be down in the description below. And, you know, if, if you get to it before anybody else in the live chat or me, right, definitely keep us posted on it. Any Anything else you want to? Um, not what uh, said BK said. So uh, uh, how important is the location being close to you, important to you for making the money? Uh, a lot of businesses, I, I, it wouldn't matter, but a larger mat, yes, because um, I gotta go out there and get those quarters. I gotta keep it clean and all that, and I want to be there. Uh, I want to, I want to uh, have a larger mat close to me because I'm gonna have to be going out there a lot. Uh, so that that would matter. But other businesses, some businesses, uh, I could do. I don't, I don't care. I don't have to be close by. All right. When you say close by, just just to put it in perspective for them, uh, you say an hour or less, or is an hour too far? An uh, hour might be too far because uh, if if it's an hour away, that means I'm gonna spend two hours going there and back. Mm. Uh, no more than about thirty minutes for me to get there and back for the oh. laundry man. Some place I gotta I'm gonna be going there quite a bit, uh, thirty minutes or more. Cool, JT, you the man. Thanks, guys. You all true examples. Okay. All love, fam. All right. So if you're not following Appliance Boot Camp, be sure to follow him. Are there any more spots available in December 7th? Uh, we might have we might have a couple more coming up. I got a couple of people um, still that hasn't paid. And um, if you go there, if you go there tomorrow afternoon, if they haven't paid, uh, they, they'll be coming off. So we might have one or two left. And um, also, uh, my, my, uh, my live screens now, I'm trying to be a little bit more coordinated with the times. So people can be there. So uh, right now, if you come to Appliance Boot Camp on Monday and Thursday nights from um, 8 until 9, uh, you, you can catch me there. And if you have any questions, uh, Q&A questions, you can actually uh, come there and get them answered. All right, cool. There you have it, you guys. So until next time, so all my hustlers stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm gone. Bye.